Hello, everyone. Today is Wednesday. Hard to say Wednesday instead of Thursday. We've been saying Thursday for 20 years, August 5th, 2020. And this is the week in charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate that very much. Please give me a like, share it, and I will give you a high five. I guess we can't give high fives anymore, can we? I was going to bring the high five back, too. That's a bummer. All right, what are we talking about? Well, current market conditions, obviously, your questions on trading, your favorite stock picks. Two things on those. One, hold off on your stock picks until we get to the live charts. And if you don't mind, ask about one ticker at a time. And that's for your benefit, so your tickers don't get lost in the other questions. And if you don't mind, keep the questions on the slides. And that way my ADD doesn't kick in too much. And I do go off and rant. Sometimes sometimes they're good rants, sometimes they're bad rants. But somebody once said they don't learn much from me when I'm trying to teach them, but when I go off on a rant, they learn some things. So <laughs> I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. So could we be in the right place at the right time? And this is a presentation or similar to a presentation I did last week. And I keep retelling the story, so let me just try to get it down to as Reader's Digest as possible. I met a trader once during some business dealings in the mid 90s, maybe a little bit closer to 2000, and he had made $80 million trading and he was in the right place at the right time. So you could say, well, and he himself said he couldn't do it in today's market. He said he was like the guy with one eye and the land of the blind. And obviously other people didn't all make $80 million during that time. And a lot of people lost money because the market he was trading was a zero sum game type of market. 1999 for us stock guys, those of us old enough to remember, I know we have a new batch of traders coming in now and hey, welcome aboard. 1999 was the right place at the right time. And the point I'm trying to get to is you have to recognize you're at the right place and the right time. And I think right now is the right place and the right time. Now, somebody left a comment that said something about a bull walks into a bear bar or something like that, basically saying that you bulls are going to get trapped, the fat lady's getting ready to sing or whatever. Insert your favorite phrase. And further in the presentation that I did last week, if you can't sleep at night, go in and watch it. I did say that it's interesting that all the professional traders I'm talking to in my Facebook group, we're all like, hey, this is fantastic, but we know this will not last forever. So we need to enjoy it. It's like we're more worried about it ending than getting too full of ourselves or excited about how much money we're going to make for now. We just really worried what it's going to end. And along those lines, it's providing us a plethora of lessons as I share the methodology in action. That's one thing I've done quite a bit in my stock charts show, which I did earlier today. I grab a lot of charts and I have what's called a mystery chart. I'll put up a chart. I won't put the name of the chart up. And then the next week I'll follow through on how the trade worked, good, bad, or indifferent, or in some cases, not at all meaning that it didn't trigger. And we'll get to that in one second. Anyway, the point I'm trying to get to is that lately the market has provided us with a plethora of lessons. It reminds me of a little friend in Germany. Dave, I learned a new word from you, plethora. Actually, I think it was a Russian friend of mine. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is Claimer Screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often summing up. All predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now. A lot of stuff can happen between now and then, he tried to say. That's from my buddy, Greg Morris. All right, let's take a look at the methodology in action. And then along those lines, as you'll see with quite a few of these trades, one has to wonder if we really are in the right place at the right time. And the reason I'm harping on this so much and beating the dead horse is just, just in case we are, I wanna make sure that I pointed it out and I wanna make sure that I recognize that we are in the right place at the right time. And I really think we are. How long could it last? I have no idea. So if you think about putting a comment like, oh man, you're getting ready to get slaughter. Maybe I am. But keep in mind, as Mr. Keynes once said, a market could stay irrational a lot longer than you can stay solvent. 
And bubbles, if you want to call it a bubble, a bubble in biotech, a bubble in gold, a bubble in silver, a bubble in Bitcoin, all these things. And we'll get the live charts to remind me. We'll take a look at these things. All these things could be bubbles, but remember, bubbles go a lot further and last a lot longer than most people are willing to believe. Again, the market can stay irrational a lot longer than you could stay solvent. And also, while that market is staying irrational, it's trading on pure emotions and the market is not confusing the issue with facts. And that's where you gotta be really careful. Don't confuse the issue with facts. And there's been a lot of hedge fund guys, I don't wanna go off on a tangent, imagine that. But you go back a couple of months when we were getting heavily long and getting knocked out of our shorts and said, well, so long, see you later, whatever. We'll start buying some stocks now. We don't care, right? Markets go up, markets go down. And we just don't like it when they go sideways because we can't make any money. Anyway, if you go back a couple of months, there were a lot of hedge fund guys, and one of them got into a heated argument with somebody on CNBC because people were dying and all these bad things were going on in the world. My Cajun just slipped out. I said bad. And he's right, but he's confusing the issue with facts, and that's why it's funny. I, I beat the dead horse. I draw my big blue arrows, uptrend, downtrend, sideways, and all these other things. And as, as much as I do that, and as much as I point, hey, it's either going up or it's going down or going sideways, you still have people, especially who should know better, people who should really know better, such as these hedge fund guys, fighting the market and losing billions of dollars in some cases. And that's a that's a reoccurring lesson. I, I did that about the I did a lesson on that about the Ackman debacle a few years back and kind of harped on that. And it's just hard to believe that one guy would be so obstinate to lose $4 billion in one stock. Anyway, I digress. Now, one thing I was noticing as I was putting this presentation together is nearly all of the recent setups were Landry-like pullbacks, which I think is pretty cool. Now, as I've said before, I used to do a lot of research with the 20-day EMA and right around that time, I also looked at the 10-day simple moving average and the 30-day EMA. And I did, that's when I stumbled across bow ties for trend transitions. But as far as trend resumption patterns, I noticed that sometimes the market will pull back to the EMA. Now, Linda Rasky calls it a holy grail and, and she uses ADX for trend, I do believe. What I've done with this is I just use Landry Light, which I like to take things and make them as simple as possible, as you probably know. So here's the open portfolio. And one thing I want to point out that this VBIV triggered today, but it triggered on an opening gap reversal, or as we call them, ogres. Now, sometimes we play these ogres to our advantage. Sometimes you get a nice little pullback and all of a sudden the market drops hard on the open and then snaps right back. I haven't seen a lot of those work well lately, but I look for them every day on the open. Anyway, getting back to the VBIV, you can see it was in a really, really nice trend. The orange line is a 30 EMA, as you can see up here. And then down here we have Landry Light. To those who are new to the show, if the lows are greater than the moving average, and you could set it to whatever you want, I have it set for a 30 EMA, then you're gonna have green if the price is intersecting the moving average, you won't have any green or red, Landry Light. And if the price is below the moving average, you'll have red, as you can see here. This just counts the number of days of daylight and these little reference lines I have them set for 10 because right around 10 is a pretty good number to show that you could be in a trend. Now, you can see we've had a lot of Landry light in here, way more than 10, 50 or 60 days, and then we pull back to the moving average. Now, as I said earlier, it was an opening gap reversal. So let's talk about that. So Lawrence says, VBIV, that one hurts. Well, let's see how it shakes out. Let's not get too excited 
just yet. And I know you're in the part of a world, the world where you do have to trade, th trade things a little bit more mechanically. If you are newer to the methodology, I do re recommend you trade things a little bit more mechanically. But in a case like this, you come in and you have a gap open, a big gap, and then the stock begins to come right back in. And let's say your entry is here. You don't want to try to buy that stock on the way back down to try to beat the system, so to speak, or to enter at the original price. What you do is you put in a new order above the high and see if you get triggered back in. So in this particular case, I did not take this trade, but tomorrow I'll look to possibly take it above the high. Now, I wouldn't get too excited. Laurent, you said that one hurts. I wouldn't get too excited just yet. The day I put on a trade, I try to just ignore it and not get too excited one way or the other. The question is, should we cut our losses and set up some re-entry strategy settings? Um, you could, but now you're introducing a bunch of more decisions to the process. And in your particular case, because you're putting in orders before the market is open, then you could easily put in a new order and then all of a sudden it gaps and you get triggered once again and that would just add insult to injury so once you take a trade just follow the pan, follow the plan and see it to its fruition now getting back to landry like pullbacks i didn't realize it until after the fact but i noticed that the chewy trade which triggered a while back was also a landry light pullbacks got it thanks lauren okay yeah good good you're welcome now you can see it pulled back to the moving average and notice that it begins to intersect the moving average. So notice that we no longer have Landry light. So we have a dead money report this week. And if you want to see the trades, all the trades mentioned tonight, with the exception of two that I took, one was in the Landry list, which you'll see in the archives. And another one was an IPO, actually two IPOs I took this week. And both of those IPOs we were talking about in the Facebook group. And by the way, thank you guys in the Facebook group for bringing up the ANNX. Like I said, it was on my radar. I, I do look at these IPOs before the close. But lately, I've been so busy between the markets and business and everything that it'd be easy for me. It'd be very easy for me to miss that trade. So anyway, getting back to the Chewy, we had a nice trend of pullback. That was also a Landry Light pullback. We had an entry here, and that was another one of those cases. That was kind of a small opening gap reversal. I did not take the original trade, but I did re-enter when it got back above that high. We had a stop here. We had an initial profit target up here. And it's like once that initial profit target got hit, this stock just kind of died but it really didn't do anything wrong. Now, for a stock to do something wrong, what does it have to do? It has to hit, or God forbid, gap through our protective stop. And all this stock did was consolidate by trading sideways. But as usual, a lot of people get impatient and they're like, Dave, this is, this is dead money. Well, if you truly knew it was dead money, dead money basically says it has no or very little chance of any more appreciation. Well, if you knew that for a fact, then by all means, get out of the market. But you don't know that for the fact. For a fact. You don't have a crystal ball. So as long as the stock is doing okay, then stick with it. In fact, it was kind of interesting. I've been reading and rereading the Darvis book and working on a piece on that for Random Thoughts, and I've been working on it for a long time. So God knows when I'll get around to getting it done with everything that's going on. But it's interesting that he actually didn't care if his stock bounced around within his box. And this would be kind of like a box here between support and resistance as long as it didn't break down below. So it's kind of the same thing when you have a stock bouncing around like this and going sideways. Now, after, especially after a big trend, I always used to say, and I guess I still do, the bigger the base, the bigger the launch into space. Because everybody gets used to that trading range and then people get caught off guard when it breaks out for good. And I used to think that that was my saying, but Ralph Acampora said it before me. And I bet if I keep digging through all my old text on technical analysis, I bet I would find where somebody might have even, even said it before. Ralph, there's nothing new under the sun. Now, what's kind of cool with this one is I just kind of forgot about it. 
And then what happened? Well, we had a nice little breakout higher, and now we're back to trend following mode and longer term trend following mode. Now, again, we have so much to talk about tonight because there's so many lessons. And what we do with these stops, with these trailing stops, is we let them widen out over time so the stock can come up here and consolidate and do what it has to do. And as it moves higher and higher, we let this widen out naturally. We never move it away from price, but we move it towards price, but not at the same rate of change, okay? So sometimes if the stock goes up a few cents, like Chewy did today, this is a day old chart, but Chewy went up a little bit today, I just left the stop where it is and I call that keep the change. Now, sometimes like if it makes a big move like yesterday or day before yesterday goes up, let's say two and a half points, we might only raise that stop up two points and let it, that stop open by a half a point. And I call that gaining ground because you're gaining ground on how much you're gonna make, You know, God forbid, no, no gap through the stop, but you're gaining ground on how much you're going to make when not if you get stopped out. And by the way, in the end, you will give up some profits and in the end, it will hurt. And as I preach over and over and over again, if that pisses you off, then send me the money. I'll be happy to take that troublesome cash off your hands. And in 20 something years of doing this, almost 30 now, not one person has ever sent me that troublesome cash. So this was one of my original examples with the Landry light. And by the way, this is, we'll probably, we'll pull up the, uh, I wanna show you a couple things with this ACP. I also have this indicator for free in Metastock in case you're interested. And you can go to that uh, button on my website, new to my methodology or trading, and you can find those software packages there. This is ACP, which is a new, platform by stock charts advanced charting platform and i don't know how much membership costs or how that works with stock charts or whether it's it's free also to the free members but it's a really cool package and the programmers were very kind to uh, to put my indicator in there and i've been playing with it more and more and by the way i've been doing more and more things with stock charts lately with their platform because they have obviously accommodated me with some of these indicators and stuff also, by the way, I also look at a blank chart every night before I put any indicators on it, although I have been playing with this Landry light quite a bit and really enjoyed messing around with it. I know you probably want to party with me, right? But I always look at a blank chart first because uh, an indicator doesn't necessarily indicate, it illustrates what's in the chart. So if you were using this indicator down here and you've got over 10 days of Landry light and then you have none, that is a Landry light pullback. So you're thinking, okay, well, that's pretty cool. It, it actually shows you what's in the chart. So here, down here, we have about 10 days of Landry light. Stock pulls back, intersects the moving average and that's why we have no Landry light down here. And one thing I was thinking about before we go live, the with live tonight, is the beauty of something like this is you can put that in a scanning package. You can say, all right, well, give me at least 10 days of Landry lights to the upside, pick your favorite moving average, and then let me know when it intersects the moving average by going to no Landry light, and that's a little scan for you. So. Over time, I'll see if maybe stock charts can help me get some scans put together. And if I really have enough time, I'll just go in and program it myself. But that's one of the beauties of something like this is that you can go in and quantify your scans. Now, as you know, I'm not a big fan of mechanical trading and quantifying everything because I am a discretionary trader. But if there is something like this that lends itself to some sort of scanning or whatever, makes it easy to recognize, then by all means use it. Now, something like a, maybe a TKO would be left to more discretion and be a little bit harder to scan for, but something like a Landry like pullback, and I would still use discretion. I don't take every one. Obviously, you can't take every one that's out there. But something like this, where a stock just accelerated higher and then had this nice deep pullback to the 30 day, 
And lately, by the way, I don't know if I said this earlier, I did say it in my stock chart show earlier today, but the I used to really, really do a lot of stuff with the 20-day EMA. I fell in love with the 20-day EMA back in the mid-90s, wrote an article for Stocks and Commodities. I think it came out in 1996 called the 220 EMA breakout system. And I later talked about some pullback systems to the 20 EMA, again, similar to what Linda Rasky did. I believe she was using the 20 EMA too. And in more recent times, based on the magnitude of these big moves in these stocks so far so fast, I like to see a lot more knockout type of move, so to speak, or a deeper pullback. And the 30-day EMA, and again, I eyeball this, and, and to my amazement, it's like, Everything tonight pretty much was a Landry Light pullback to 30 EMA. So that's what's going on there. And again, you're seeing all these indicators. Don't get nervous. It's just a simple, it simply just shows you what's going on in a chart. And by the way, sometimes if you're looking at like the overall market, and this gets up to like a hundred or so, especially if you're looking at like a weekly chart, then you know that the market is probably due to correct. Doesn't mean you want to try to time that market top. But you might want to pull in your horns a little bit and think twice before putting on a new position or at least make sure you use a liberal entry in that position and make sure you're honoring your stops just in case. Anyway, entry was here. The protective stop was down here. And the initial profit target was here. Now, you can see that we brought that stop up to break even when the initial profit target was hit. In this particular case, we really didn't move it much until the target was hit. In some cases, if a market just kind of creeps higher and higher day after day, we'll bump that stop before the target is hit. I've had clients in the past who don't adjust their stop until the target is hit. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to catch more trends. You'll probably hit more profit targets. At least, unfortunately though, you will get stopped out, stopped out for a bigger loss when that initial profit target isn't hit. So there's always a trade-off in trading, and I guess that's why they, they call it trading. So this is what happened over the last week or so here. And you can see it's beginning to pull away from that moving average again, and that's a, a good thing, obviously. Now, APG, it's kind of interesting. This is an IPO. Now, you'll notice if you've been around for a while, usually, at least, or you're familiar with my methodology, I should say, you'll, Notice that this did pull back fairly deeply and it did pull back for quite a few days. It's a little bit bigger picture pattern that I trade as opposed to a generic pullback. It's something like the OCFT. And I like for stocks to pull back in this particular case more deeply after a pretty good run like this stock has had. And in an IPO, I'm a little bit more lenient. I call this a first deep retracement. And the other thing, too, by the way, is some of the stocks you're seeing did pull back for quite a few days. And some of the stocks that are in the recommended in service recommended for tomorrow have pulled back quite a few days. And that's because I'm a little bit more lenient nowadays, at least at this, in this particular market, because so many of these stocks have just taken off and doubled or quadrupled that they need a little bit more time to digest their gains and that pull back before they can take off again. And so that's kind of my thinking there. And like the Chewy trade, we put that on, we waited a few days or quite a few days before it triggered and some other recent stocks, same sort of action there too. But in IPO, I do allow quite a few days and a much deeper retracement as a general statement. And the same thing in general has been applying to, the, applying to the overall market based on the magnitude. So anyway, we pull back. You can see we kiss the moving average here, which is illustrated down below. So we had an entry here, a stop down here because it's a very volatile stock, gave it plenty of room, and an IPT of right there. Now notice that there were a couple days where it just didn't quite hit the IPT. And I preached and I preached and I preached. Please take partial profits when it gets that close. Don't split hairs. Now, luckily, it did officially hit that IPT in so far. So good. And of course, we trail our stop higher. And that stop has widened out a little bit point-wise. So hopefully, and I know it's a dangerous word, but hopefully we're able to ride out some corrections along the way. Now, DRD, another interesting one in here. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it was also a Landry Light pullback. And you can see down below, we had plenty, plenty, plenty upside Landry Light. The stock pulls back. This is a gold stock, by the way. 
Notice that we kiss the moving average down below. Notice that the Landry light goes away. And then it triggers an entry. We have a stop down here. And we had a we have initial profit target, he tried to say, up here. Now, once again, it came very, very, very close to that profit target. And I did take half of my profits at that level. Now, the service, if you look at the service spreadsheet or go back a few slides or look at the recording and back it up, you'll notice that I don't have the profit target taken on this. Well, that's because it has a dead hit. But I do think you can apply a little bit of discretion when it comes to trading. And if you're getting that close, then by all means, please take profits. And then somebody said, well, if your profit target is is 18, why, why don't we set our limit order for 17 and a half? And it's like, well, you're kind of defeating the whole purpose of my intentions with the, or my intents when it comes to taking those initial profits. It's like you have a level where you want to get to that level, but then be a little bit more lenient when it comes time to actually take them if the market can't seem to get through that level or can't seem to get through like the APT, although it eventually did, obviously, or APG, I think, APG. Or if it gets really, 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 really close to it. Now, this is one I took on my own. It was in the Landry list. I would say 99% of the position trades that I take are going to be in this Landry list. Now, on this particular day, we had 20 or so stocks. Sometimes we don't have any stocks if the market is really, really crappy. And some days we have a few, but there were a lot in this list. And if you get bored, take a snapshot of this list or hit pause and go in and check them all out. And there were some pretty amazing moves in some of these stocks. And some of them died out and fortunately did not trigger. But anyway, that was DOYU. It's one I took on my own. And when I go to pull it up, lo and behold, it too was a Landry Light pullback. So this is kind of the hot pattern right now. We did have one little day of red, but I wouldn't get too excited about that. And my initial profit target was right here. And so far, we've hit that. And so far, knock on wood, it has traded higher. Now, it was trading at 20 overnight, and I've become, well, I'd say I've become friendly. I've been really good friends with one of my clients for about, I don't know how long we've known each other, maybe 20 years, maybe even going way back to the trading markets days. And uh, he texts me at five this morning. He gets up early. I get up early. <laughs> He's like, do you regret that DOYU exiting that? Because I reminded him in the close to take some partial profits. And DOYU was actually trading at 20 overnight. And I told him I'm strangely okay with the fact that I've exited because it could have easily been down and it did come well off its best levels today as you know but hopefully and as i word hopefully hopefully longer term it will continue to trend and i'll be able to ride it out i'm sorry i made a mistake early i said that was initial profit target where i have the red arrow i thought that was a little early the entry was where the green arrow is and my initial profit target was hit and i took those profits so this was the best trade of the week best position trade of the week at least, and so far so good. And this is off of what I call my model account, even though I, I do use a lot of discretion and do a lot of things that are outside of the core methodology in this account. But I do take service trades, so if I need to show where I got in or how it worked, I can actually grab a screen grab and show you what's going on. But those are the actual trades there. Not that I report every trade that I do, but I do like to if I'm gonna teach something, I wanna show you that I actually took it. And there's our trailing stop. And barring overnight gaps, the worst we could do is break even. Although I do have to say, I'm gonna be tempted to come in and check at night. And if it's if I'm up an extra, if I'm up another 50% overnight, I might have to peel off a couple of shares. <laughs> Here's another one. This was in the Facebook group, and I put out a post earlier to you guys thanking you. Again, I could have easily overlooked this with all the craziness going on lately. So I want to thank you guys once again for pointing this one out. Remember, with the IPO patterns, the earliest we will ever get in is the close of 
day five. Let's let everybody else fight it out for the first few days. This is the second day of trading here, third day of trading, fourth day of trading. Now on that fourth day, we make a new high, okay? Which is higher than, in this particular case, the day one high. Now, for the buy at B pattern, without going into all the details because there's a plethora of caveats, but the basic rules are a new closing high on or after day five, provided that that closing high is also above the day one high, if the day one high is the high for the week. That sounds a lot more complicated than it is. In this particular case, on day four, we made a new high, so we don't have to worry about the high of day one, okay? Now, it just so happens that your entry, actually it wasn't, so this makes for a good example. So it just so happens that your entry was not above the high of day one, but it did also close above the high of day one. But that rule, we don't need to use that rule, or we didn't, don't have, uh, I didn't take that rule into consideration because day four took out the day one high. Anyway, you can see on that particular day, after day five, any day after day five, we look for the highest close. And I bought the shares market on close. It's a little hard to do psychologically because it's like if you're trading and you get an entry on something during the day, by the end of the day, you know whether you're getting a head start on your trade and doing pretty good or if you're not doing so high. But these buy market on close, especially in an IPO like this one, which could be a little bit thinner, okay? Not like some heavy, thick liquid stock that's going to trade after hours, so you can see how you did. It's a little bit scarier, I have to admit. And then the next day we had a pretty good start, but then it came back in. So you're beginning to wonder whether or not you did the right thing. And again, it's a little scary thing to trade, but it can work out nicely. And so far, so good on that one. Now, here's one that really hasn't taken off yet. I do like to show you as much as possible things that haven't quite taken off yet, just so we could see how they work out. And this would probably still be a, a viable setup because it hasn't really gotten that far past the trigger. By the way, with buy it B, you, as a general statement, you want to take IPOs less than 20, but that's not a hard rule in this particular market because everything's so crazy. I'm not as worried about that $20 a share, but if it gets well above $20 a share, what I'll do is throw in a five-day simple moving average, and then the low has to be greater than the five-day simple moving average. In other words, you need Landry Light. So if we start seeing more and more setups, I'll spend an entire presentation just on IPOs, and of course, you there is an IPO course available, and I do talk about IPOs behind the members area. Day one, day two, what happened on day two? We took out the day one high. So we no longer have to factor in the day one high in our calculations, day three, day four, day five. So what's the highest close out of all those days? Day two. So we look to buy, mark it on close, if we close above the highest close for the first five bars. Now, you don't know until the close is near. So what I like to do is add on a little bit to that close to make sure it closes well above that high. Because sometimes if it if it's just, you're not sure whether it's gonna close at a high or not, it does make a difference if you're not buying into that brand new closing high. The good thing with IPOs is at a new closing high, everybody's happy. It's very hard to short an IPO. I think the market makers might be able to short some to to get some shares out there, if, to create some shares, but it's not easy. It's not an easy thing for the public to rush out and do. So as a general statement, everybody who is in an IPO at a new closing high is happy. Now, this was another stock in the service. This was what I call the mystery chart, or one of the mystery charts from my stock chart show. And you can see, once again, we had a kiss down to the moving average. And I did give it a few extra days to trigger. 
for those aforementioned reasons, just because all these stocks or many of these stocks have gone so far so fast. Entry was here, stock was down here. And remember, it's a pretty simple equation. Your initial profit target, if you can figure out your stop, that's the hardest part. And for me, it's not that hard. I just kind of eyeball the stock and say, okay, where would it fail? And what's the volatility of the stock? And how do I make sure I'm outside that normal shorter term volatility? So at least I can get a swing trade out of the stock. Out of the stock. So you subtract your entry, which is just, you want to give some wiggle room, like that TKO high, since it pulled back below that TKO high quite a bit. If it took out that TKO, TKO high, I figured that'd be a good place to get in. That's a trend knockout. And all of these patterns, again, are, are behind the firewall in the members area. And this is that UV. In H, another one here, to my surprise, also a Landry Light pullback. Nice uptrend here. Usually, this the way the I didn't I wasn't nuts about this wide range bar that came back in a little bit, but everything is so volatile right now. I'm not quite as picky as I used to be, looking for as much perfection, and it still did rally up several hundred percent. So I consider that a pretty good trend. And in this particular case, we did have some downside Landry light, but this stock has gone so far so fast. I was willing to give it a little bit of wiggle room as far as the depth of the pullback the length of the pullback in this case so again big blue arrow there a little bit of downside landry light trigger was up here and it's since triggered since i created this slide and a stop is down here so we'll see what happens now here's one that was recommended last week and i mentioned it as a mystery chart and I decided to pass. We did have the Landry Light pullback, like I said. But then as I looked at it, after more and more and more days, entry was up around 17 and a half. And we had quite a bit of downside Landry Light. And it started to me, it started to look a little bit like an inverted cup and handle. And also, to those of you who know my other patterns, it also qualifies as a first thrust down. Not that I'm anxious to short anything just yet although i did see a couple of shorts tonight that caught my eye but for the most part other than to like i told my service peeps tonight you can see those archives in a few days i'll, I'll put them on the back end i'll put them under archives davelander.com slash archives you'll see that every now and then i will fire off a short if i really really like to set up even during a bull market and it kind of helps me to remember how to short stocks but I'm not too excited to short anything in this market unless it's a really, really thick stock that looks like it's in a lot of trouble. So I decided to pass on that. Now, one thing I thought would be a good idea, and again, I did this earlier today in my show, but one thing I want to do is just kind of illustrate what sometimes happens is sometimes a market will get fairly close to that entry and then come right back in and never trigger. And I know I've told this story a thousand times, but there's a new there's new people coming in all the time. So let me just retell it. And plus, I I be willing to almost bet my life that some at some point in the near future I'll get the same email once again. Dave, I'm down 30% in that turd you recommended. And I'm like, or let me rewind it. <laughs> I don't know why my I sound like uh, what's his name Grover. Dave, I'm down 50% uh, in that turd you recommended. And I'm like, I never recommended this stock. It's going down for six months. Why would I recommend this stock? Yes, you did. I'm like, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. Well, they're down here someplace like this. And, you know, mark my words. And I, and I, I need to remember this. So it's, what, August 5th? And I took this stock off a couple of days ago. Somebody's going to email me probably in six months, and BLDP is probably going to be at $5 a share. And they're going to say, What the hell should I do with this stock? <laughs> and we'll go through the same little, little back and forth. Well, I'm amazed at how many times you could avoid a losing trade. Not all losing trades. And believe me, if, if you could avoid all losing trades, if I could figure out a way to do that, you'd never see my fat ass again. But you could avoid a lot of losing trades by waiting for entry. So once again, 
as you can see, it's like the more and more I look at all these stocks that I recommended recently and traded myself recently, the more lessons there are. Not that you miss all the all the losing trades. I had quite a few losing trades recently. I had quite a few losing trades today, more than I care to admit. But by following some of these prudent practices, you will avoid quite a few losing trades. Now, here's another one that I decided to pass on, and it was a recommendation for a few days. And I didn't like the action in the stock, but you can see, once again, longer term uptrend, and then you had a pullback to the moving average. This was a little unorthodox. You didn't have 10 days of land light in between. But I liked it longer term, and my thinking was that it would it accelerated higher, but I was thinking it would come down, bounce off that moving average, and go back to make brand new highs. It was just enough shakeout to spook out enough people. Anyone who had bought back around the 150 level and you had a base back there, I just thought it would come down, bounce off, and take off again. But that didn't happen. So what I ended up doing was I decided to pass. So and after reevaluating it, after a few days of it not triggering, I decided that it has gone sideways. Good job, Zach. Zach recognized that sideways arrow. So I recognized it has gone sideways. You're one step ahead of me and decided to pass. And I replaced it with this particular stock here. And lo and behold, it's another Landry Light pullback. Well, that's just kind of, that's the kind of market that we're in, right? This is a gold stock. And you can see that it did pull back to its moving average. So this is a viable setup going into tomorrow. We've been waiting a couple of days on this for a trade to trigger. Now it's kind of interesting as I'm putting this together, I did notice that it did kind of consolidate around the 30 and then take off again. So that's kind of a cool thing. And it lost a little steam in here. So I didn't want to take it here. So this is an example of maybe not take a stock when it's bouncing around as 30 after doing that for a considerable amount of time. But now, since it's taken off again and pulled back, I think it's worth a shot. But yeah, it would have worked if you'd have gotten in on that breakout above the 30. So we're gonna replace that mystery chart with that particular one. Now, a couple of these things are left over. How do we profit from being at the right place at the right time? Play your game and tread lightly if you're playing someone else's, okay? A lesson that I tend to learn and relearn quite a bit. I have a client, he may be in here tonight. He's actually literally saving lives, but he said he would stop in if he had a chance. And he's a good scalper. And this market has been a scalper's dream, at least for him. I went in and tried a little bit and learned that I'm not very good at it. <laughs> a couple of you guys are printing money day trading, and I've been doing a little bit of that intraday trading, doing fairly well. But then every now and then I just get my butt handed to me and realize that I've got to be really careful not to do a lot of things that I preach against. So play your own game. Tread lightly if you are going to play someone else's. So trade at a really small size until you wrap your head around things. Uh, for me, one of my favorite things to do is intraday relative strength combined with intraday pullback. So that T. LSA trade that I talked about last week and I talked about this morning in the stock chart show was one of those. Now, sometimes I've noticed recently, like you can have these gap and go situations where a stock will gap higher, consolidate a little bit and then take off, or maybe have an intraday breakout like a Kevin Haggerty type of Slim Jim. Sometimes the market will break out, consolidate for a little while, during the day and then begin to break out again. You could put a stop in right below that breakout, right below that Slim Jim formation. Go in and watch last week's presentation for the week in charts where we talked a little bit more about that. This is a leftover slide from last week, but I did want to touch upon these points again. And just keep the bets small. And here's the thing, if these stocks, I've seen some of these stocks go 10 points, 20 points or more. If these stocks pay off big, then a small bet is plenty. And if you get stopped out, then you're happy to have that small bet. One thing that I need to work harder doing every morning I wake up and I write three pages. And one thing I've been writing a lot lately, and I know I'm going to write a lot more about it tomorrow morning because I got stopped out of quite a few today, more than I care to admit. 
is I need to apply a little bit of the Pareto principle, little 80-20 action on any of the intraday trades that I decide to take. I, I stopped short of saying the word day trading, even though I guess, you know, some guy was hollering across the porch, in, uh, the porch, the porch in the middle of the COVID thing. He was working on the wood next door. <laughs> and he's like, should I be day trading? And I'm like, no. And then my wife pipes in, you know, he takes a lot of day trades. I'm like, well, don't confuse the issue with facts, right? <laughs> but figure out how to take the best of the best setups. And like I've been preaching quite a bit in recent shows, a lot of times I'm off chasing some of these rabbits and my own Landry list, such as that TLSA trade, has tremendous opportunities. And luckily I caught that one, but there's been a few lately I flat out missed because it's there appears, they're not necessarily, they're all actual opportunities, but there are a lot of shiny objects out there. So what I'm saying is, or try, trying to say, is that this is the right place at the right time, but you've got to be careful not to chase everything out there. And there it is right there, are you chasing rabbits? And that comes from a few, about a week or so ago, the aforementioned gentleman I was telling you about, I was looking at my portfolio and after I was trading or doing a day, I forget when it was, but anyway, the numbers were getting better, thank God. And I'm like, I got so many positions on, I'm not even sure what is moving this portfolio and he said boy you sure are chasing a lot of rabbits and you got to be careful if you find yourself doing that so i should have fixed this it says don't small i think i'm just saying keep everything small make sure your risk to reward is asymmetric so as i said a few minutes ago if you have on a small position and it really 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 takes off and you get and this is one of the rabbits i've been chasing lately i know i'm guilty of, of violating some of my rules but i caught a few of these stock halts recently and i've got halt fever <laughs> it's like i want to get in these stocks right before they get halted in some cases right after and have them go halt again and just sit there and get pretty excited but you got to do that at a really small size so keep your risks to reward asymmetric meaning that if you only risk it a little bit and there's a still a potential for the thing to take off then that is keeping that risk small and reward potentially big. And the point is that if you do catch here the mother of all trends, you'll still do pretty darn good. I mean, you know, some of these stocks lately, what, 50 points in one day? It does remind me of 1999. It's ironic. I had a bad day a week or so ago, and I said, you know, I need to tell everybody you got to be careful not to create a death of a thousand cuts and i admitted to one of you guys in person today how many things i stopped out on today i'm not going to admit it publicly because <laughs> i'm a little embarrassed because i'm sure when i go back in and look at it as the other client pointed out i might have been chasing too many rabbits but you got to be careful even with small risk it does begin to add up and especially if one or two gets away from you and again, as I've been saying, in case somebody's writing a comment after the first 10 minutes of me cheerleading this bull market, <laughs> I know that this will eventually end. And as I've said time and time again, quoting with the Rasky, just when you think you find the key to the markets, they change the lock. Now, one thing that we've seen lately, and hopefully, and there's that word hope, but hopefully we're coming out of it. Like on OCFT, for instance, we had a sharp pullback, okay? And we did not stop out. And that's a little hard thing to stomach that draw down to open profits, but that comes with the territory. And I'm not gonna go off a tangent on that, but just remember, that's just one of those things you have to live with. You can't kiss all the women. Again, don't chase too many rabbits. And even if you were Bill Cosby, and you try, or Harvey Weinstein, remember it ended badly for those guys. I guess it's too late to say that Harvey Weinstein's girlfriend didn't commit suicide, right? The market is a really bad, is a major bad teacher. You could easily get sucked into bad behavior. It's funny. I could see other traders and I'm like, boy, I can't believe you're doing that. You're, you're chasing rabbits, right? <laughs> you know? 
but when you get caught up in the middle of it, you can get really sucked into some really bad behavior. <laughs> and one thing I try to do in, in all my, if it's a trade that does not really fit my methodology, it's just something that I'm just like excited to do, recreational trading or trading for excitement, not that I want to do that, but I just see all these shiny objects lately. If I do take one of those trades, I write the word shame next to it because it's something that I should not, I know I should not be doing. And remember that shame trading, or as I call it, SG trading, like just for fun, right? An SG trade is where you got small risk, but you do think that there could be some reward, but more, more than likely you're going to get knocked out of it. If you do that quite a few times, it can add up. And if you get on the wrong side of the halt, which you will believe me at some point in your career, that kind of sucks too. Things are torn down a lot faster than they are built. This has been ringing through my head for the last week or so whenever I do something stupid or don't kind of throw caution to the wind and don't use the discipline that I preach. Now, one thing I've been writing about in my morning pages is my money management has been phenomenal and has been excellent lately. It's just that in some cases, I find myself maybe chasing too many stocks. And the market could be a bad teacher because some days, not all days, but every now and then, I'll have a day where nine out of 10 trades will work out and then I'll feel like God. And of course, I'll get my ass handed to me shortly thereafter. Now, somebody was asking me, should I short this stock? And it's like, no, don't, don't go out and short stocks willy nilly, okay? Make sure you have a setup and make sure it's like a big cap thick stock and looks like it's in a lot of trouble. For now, I wouldn't rush out and do a whole lot of shorting just yet. And of course, money management, money management, and money management. All right, if you are a gold member of DaveLander.com and you have to be a gold member to keep the riff raft out, <laughs> join the Facebook group. You can interact with other traders. You can ask for help. Lately, by the time I get around to answering the questions, you guys have already answered them. And I say you guys, because most of you guys are here live tonight. And I appreciate that. Every now and then I'll throw out some signs and signals for what it's worth. You guys talked about A and NX, and I thank you for that. And you guys put out a lot of good stuff too. Occasionally I'll throw an opening gap reversal. We haven't had we haven't hit any big ones in a while, but every now and then I'll throw one out as I see them. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the live charts. And you can become a member of DaveLander.com at either one of these links. I resisted the urge to day trade for better or for worse. Well, it's probably for the most part for the better. If you are going to day trade, then like I've been saying, you want to do like an intraday position trade where you try to get in and you try to ride that position as long as possible. And ideally what you want to have happen, kind of like in a TSLA trade, is you want to make sure you have like a, a daily setup that's also happening and go in and watch last week's presentation and you'll see more on that all right let me see if i can get the screen shared for some reason it's not letting me share it so let's just do this all right let me stop sharing okay there it is all right let's take a quick look at the overall market and you guys want to start asking about individual stocks, please begin to do so now. So first of all, let's take a look at the P's. And let me just confirm this is showing. All right, here we go. Look at that, S&P 500, Tiny Elvis is already coming out, okay? We're only up about, what, a little bit over a half percent today? Almost three quarters of a percent, I suppose. But we're at the highest level since all this mess began early this year. <laughs> Earlier today, I was saying, you know, people are like, why are you so bullish? The market's going up. Why are you so bearish? The market's going down. Why are you so bullish? The market's going up. <laughs> and believe me, if it starts going down again, I'll start shorting. I ain't afraid of no shorts. And by the way, if this is your first year of trading, <laughs> wow. Trial by fire. Don't beat yourself up if you're not doing fantastic. 
But if you live through a bull market, a bear market, and a bull market all within less than a year, congratulations. It's probably the best time in the world to become a trader right before this mess started, through this mess, and then coming out of this mess. Look at the NASDAQ. Wow. That just amazes me every time I see this thing bust out to brand new highs. Didn't set the world on fire up a half percent, but hey, that's all time highs. Nonetheless, Rusty beginning to kick it into gear. Look at that, up nearly 2%. We finally got out of this range. We got to here, and now we're trying to get past this little peak back here. While we're here, take a look at gold. Look at that, bam, brand new highs there, up nearly 1%. All of its best levels was still up nicely. Nonetheless, gold stocks up earlier in the day, coming back in, still up on the day, but off of their best levels. Ditto for silver. Silver is such a small sector controlled by some big stocks. I wouldn't get too excited about that, but as you can see, doing pretty good there. Drivers have been taking a little bit of a breather, losing a little bit of steam, but so far, uptrend remains intact there. Ditto for health, ditto for biotech, excuse me, but I'm still bullish on biotech because longer term, the uptrend remains intact. Health services, a little bit stronger than those other two guys, just off of brand new highs. So that's looking pretty good. And just to kind of, there's no need to go through too many of these, but just a few more things. Retail brand new highs and most anything technology, hardware, software, semiconductors at or near new highs. And that's kind of reflective, uh, reflecting what we're seeing in the NASDAQ. One more thing. Take a look at solar. Look at that solar. It's huge. Making out new highs with some gusto. Gold even harder not to confuse the issue with facts now with regards to deficit in dollar. Okay. Well, what you're hitting at is intermarket technical analysis and possibly some fundamentals. Just remember that you could have long lead or lag cycles when it comes to intermarket technical analysis. Study all those things, but then remember that you could have a long lead or lag cycle. But yeah, it kind of makes sense. Wouldn't gold go higher because they're printing all that money? Probably. All right. LL for Donald. Yeah, I like this one. I saw it earlier. It's a TKO. Looks pretty good. I think that's a possibility. There's some other stocks out there that I'm a little bit more excited about. You do have some longer term issues, but it's so far back here. I wouldn't worry about it. I would say, yeah, that's that's a good looking stock. Okay. Not a lot of range, but good volume. LI. Yeah, good volume. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So there's so many caveats involved with the buy at D, so don't rush out and try to trade it until you get educated. But the point he's trying to make is one of the points that I make with the IPOs. Make sure you have good range, okay? And it could be a little bit better on the range. Also, what happened on day one? We set the high one, two, three, four, five. So any close above this high. And here's one of the, um, what word am I looking for? Dilemmas or peculiarities when it comes to the buy at B. One of my caveats is that, well, you've got to get, you need to have, you got to have, you need to have good range. But here's the deal sometimes that range is completed on the day that you get in. So in this particular case, I would say it'll probably be okay to enter on a close above this high. So good eye on that one, John. Good job. DVAX. Well, at first glance, let's see what's going on here. Uh, this actually looks more like a short to me, Chris, than a long. And it kind of reminds me of the NAK a little bit. Because you did this deep pullback, but then it just kind of really didn't get out of this, whatever you want to call this here. But yeah, technically it is a Landry Light pullback. And if it doesn't rally soon out of this, I would pass. So. I, in fact, I would pass just right now. So it's not a it's not a perfect setup, but I hear you. And it did it did shoot higher. And like I said earlier, sometimes they shoot higher, come down here and just bounce straight off of the moving average. Good eye, Zach. Zach said uh, head and shoulders. Yeah, it is it does hint a little bit of a head and shoulders just for S and G's. And no, it won't happen because of the prices above it. Let's see if I can put the moving averages in. So this would be the bow tie. It's not quite a bow tie yet, but I think there's just so many other stocks in there, out there, 
that's you could probably find something a little bit better but you know in general good eye put it on your or on your watch list maybe all right donald that is my pick for today so i cannot talk about it but yeah that is what i picked in tonight's service for tomorrow so i'm going to give you a high five on that one that is my favorite stock going into tomorrow the way i look the way i figure out what my favorite stock is i flip through my momentum list and i go through my 2000 stocks before i do that to make that momentum list and i flip through my landry list which comes from all that research and if a stock jumps out at me like bam it just kind of it's kind of hard to explain but if you've been doing it for a while it just kind of jumps off the page and it's like you know what that's the stock so i i'm pretty excited about the stock i i i, I hate to show excitement like that because when i'm doing a service when I show excitement like that everybody feels like they need to pile in and mortgage their house or whatever but but yeah good job on that one I'm going to give you a high five plug looks pretty good but it's already come out of this pullback in here let's just show that little moving average in for S&Gs see that's another one of those Landry light pullbacks so yeah it looks pretty good but it's already I would say that's already triggered so if you're long as I'm assuming you are stay long Oops, CMCL. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. Now, it didn't pull all the way back to the moving average, but that's okay. I think it's pulled back deep enough. And yeah, it looks pretty good. It's a gold stock. It's a little bit on the thin side, okay? That's the only thing. Lately, there's so many stocks that are moving with so much volume out there. Not that I'm using volume as a predictor, but more, at, more so as to make sure the market is liquid enough to trade. But yeah, that looks pretty good. It's already sort of come out of this pullback a little bit, maybe an entry above this high. But yeah, it looks that looks good, Donald. Okay. Now let me just show you something real quick while we're waiting for more stock picks to come in. So earlier, and I'm just going to do this quickly because I've showed I've showed this quite a bit lately. But it's something that's a lot of fun, and I think I'll probably do a stock chart show just with this. Just give me one second to get everything shared. I got to move some windows around. It's it's not as easy as it might look. All right. It won't let me move it. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, now it's working. So just real quick, and I'm I'm gonna do a little bit longer presentation on this but the point is that everything works better with trend so just by random chance the spiders were up here and you see you have landry light no downside landry light for a long long time what happened before the spill well look at that we had a great trend we had Landry light the whole time. And then what happened? We had this little spill in here, a little first thrust, a little bow tie down for those keeping score. And we had Landry light to the downside. So that's the indices, right? What about gold? Okay. GLD. Well, look what's going on there. Okay. You had a little bit of choppiness back here. But for the most part, it's been green all the way since April. Well, before you rush out and think that I've discovered the Holy Grail here, or you've discovered the Holy Grail, again, just realize that everything works better with trend, but use something like the Landry Light as a tool. And again, it could be a great little illustrator down here. Now, I am long Bitcoin. I'm long more Ethereum than Bitcoin, which I hate to give up too much of my Bitcoin to, uh, to trade Ethereum, but Ethereum has been stronger as of late. But take a look at Bitcoin, okay? You've got some nice green down here, and what do you have? You got a nice trend up here. You had a little consolidation here. We had some green and red. It was getting a little iffy in here, but then it took off again. Now, before that, what happened? Okay, well, Bitcoin had a bear market like the overall stock market. It had a bull market before that. Look at that. Green, stay long. Red, stay short or out, okay? So that's Bitcoin, that's gold. Lots of good looking markets in here. You know, I just showed you solar panels, all right? Let's take a look at solar panels, right? Well, look at that, okay? It's been green all the way since April. But before you get too excited, let's, let's start kissing each other just yet. But again, 
as you can see, everything works better with trim. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up silver. I almost forgot. I'm a silver bug. I've been a silver bug on and off my whole life, and I'm just kind of getting into it again. Of course, it's daylight and a dollar short, a little bit high levels here. But look at that. Okay, we had one little kiss of the moving average, and then it's been pretty much off to the races ever since. Now, keep in mind, commodities tend to be choppy markets, but when they trend, it's like butter. Look at the sell off we had earlier this year. Notice all the red down here. So everything works better with trend. Write that down. Yeah, RBP, I've looked at this stock quite a bit. It's a crazy one. But hey, look at this. Everything works better with trend. And this was kind of this was a pullback that I would not have played because this stock's been in my momentum list forever. But yeah, if it begins to pull back now, make sure you have this stock on your momentum list. It's on my list for sure. STKL, yeah, that's a volatile one. STKL. And notice this nice trend. Notice it's been green. I would let it pull back a little bit more in here, but yeah, that's definitely on my watch list for sure. <laughs> TGB, I love, or I did love at least TGB. It's a it's a cheap stock, right? But what's happening here? Nice, nice green Landry light. Okay, nice little pullback. Didn't quite get to the 30, but that's okay. It pulled back deeply. Yeah, I like the stock a lot. And you know, like I've been preaching lately, uh, diamonds and diamonds in your own backyard, right? Acres of diamonds. It's one that I meant to keep an eye on, and I was just so busy with everything else. Hello, Mike. Mike. Uh, NH, I like NH. We are long. I don't know if you're just joining us, but yeah, we had the Landry light -like pullback here. Nice little uptrend. Nice little pullback. Um, I don't want to make any jokes because I know you're new to the presentation, but sometimes when I'm long a stock like this, I'll joke and say, yeah, mortgage your house, you know, <laughs> get rid of that, get rid of that, all that money you put aside for your kids. They're a pain in the ass anyway, and take that college money you got saved for them and put all your money into this stock. Obviously, I'm joking. Please do not take that sentence out of context. It's a little late, I think, to get in now. So if it, God forbid, if it pulls back a little bit, then maybe above this little point here. But yeah, I like it a lot. Okay, Lawrence said LBGO. He's been in trend following mode. All right, let's see what we got. Wow, that's beautiful. And that's another stock in my momentum list. Takeover from TDOC, how would you trade? These takeover things are tricky. So uh, I would just keep a stop in place. Sometimes takeovers, here's the tricky part, and you got to be careful not to confuse the issue with facts, but sometimes a takeover falls through. But that doesn't mean the stock is going to implode. It means that the stock is a worthy can still might be a worthy candidate for takeovers, but there's no way to quantify that. Since you're already in longer term trend following mode, I would continue to follow along. By the way, what do we have here? Nice green Landry light pullback, bam, pullback, okay? Landry light pullback there, and then it took off again. I mean, if this doesn't get you excited, then you need to find something else to do, okay? Just think about what you could do with the money you made on something like that. It's just amazing. And this is just a really, really good looking market. Am I still watching BDRY? Well, it's an ETF, and I'm not super excited about it, but yeah, I think it's still okay. It took off, you had nice little Landry light, it came back in and now it's taken off again. So I think it's okay as a longer term play. But yeah, this one, as Lauren is pointing out, was on my Landry list for a while. Steve is here tonight. In and snap. Um, this one, let me, I probably should jump back to Telechart, but this one, even though you've got the Landry Light pullback here, it looks like it's lost some steam. It sort of looks like it's rolling over. The other thing that's jumping out at me is this gap down. You don't want a gap against a trend. So I would leave this one alone for now, okay? All right, any more? How are we doing on time? We've got a few time for a little more. No, no. Uh, Zach is asking, should we start using Landry Light as a replacement for pullback, for simple pullback? No, because 
you're going to miss some trades that still look pretty good that might not get back to the 30 day. I just like to show simple things that are conceptually correct that somebody newer to trading or somebody who has maybe lost sight of the basics can return to. Okay. So I don't specifically go out and trade just the pullbacks to the 30 day EMA, but it is something that's pretty cool. JMIA, yeah, that thing has been amazing. It's just been crazy. But look at that, look at that trend, tiny Elvis, right? It's huge. So yeah, on a pullback, and I'd like to see a pretty deep pullback here. I mean, obviously the, the 30 might even be too far. If it went all the way back there, I would, I would almost be concerned. So there's a case where it's kind of going straight up. But yeah, by all means, put that on your watch list, okay? All right, any more? Well, I'm an impasse. I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, we can certainly pick up in the Facebook group. And if you wanted to email me, davelander.com slash contact, and I could maybe cover it in one of these shows if you're not a member of Facebook. All right, everybody have a great night. I really enjoyed you guys tonight. I don't know if we had any ladies tonight, but if we did, uh, thank you very much for attending too. Everybody have a fantastic night and we will, I'll see you guys in the Facebook group tomorrow. Thank you so much.